Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood. We're here in the Eastwood garage doing another live tech session for you guys. For any of you guys that haven't watched one of these before, we try and discuss a topic or a product um, that you guys might want to know more information about. Uh, today we're talking about the Eastwood tri radio. So if you want to log in on the chat on YouTube or Facebook, you can join in on the chat and ask questions live. We have Scott as always on the chat. Yep, so I can you know snag your questions here, get them answered, or I can always shoot them over to Matt. So. Now it's summertime. Today's a good topic for, uh, for the tri-flow radiator and overheating. Yeah, so uh, for any of you guys that haven't looked at this uh, particular product, you don't know much about it. It's something we've had for a little while now. Um, and this is a perfect example of uh, us here at Eastwood taking something and trying to figure out how to make it better and also affordable. So there's a lot of uh, aluminum radiators on the market that are um, a double pass radiator that do the job, but we know a lot of you are still having problems with overheating, especially in the uh, hot summer months like this where you're sitting uh, in a little bit of traffic at a car show or when you're cruising. So we came out with the Tri-Flow Radiator. It's a full aluminum construction radiator, and we have this good uh, sample radiator that we've cut apart here to kind of show you guys how it works, to make it a little uh, visually a little easier to understand. So we have our, our coolant is coming through into here, and it's passing through. And then what it does is it drops down. Uh, so if you have, a, if you have a, a radiator that's a double pass, it's going to drop down here, and it's going to come back across and then drop all the way down, and it's going to leave the radiator. Um, so on this one, or it would have it over on one side, and it would do that. Uh, on this one, what we've done is we actually have it dropping down. It comes across again for a third time, and then it's going to come out here on the bottom. What that does is it gives you twice the circulation of the coolant in your radiator. It's going to keep it in there twice as long, and it's going to keep it in front of your cooling fan, uh, your radiator fan, twice as long as well. So that's going to allow your radiator fan to uh, cool down the air twice as much, or when you're moving, it's keeping the cool air that's flowing in front of it in there for twice as long, which is really good. Now, we've, we've seen in our own testing, we took these radiators and we wanted to have like independent testing done, so we actually sent it to a lab and had them uh, and a machine shop and had them actually run this radiator on an engine stand and do it and check the differences. So we've seen up to 24 degrees difference um, uh, increase or, or actually decrease in the temperature over uh, a standard uh, radiator that you would have in your car, uh, aluminum radiator included in that. Now we have a nice video that we can queue up here. We actually did a video where we installed one of these uh, in a Firebird. And we showed the mounting of it. It's, it's uh, really simple with the brackets are really universal and you can just uh, mount it pretty easily. So we have a nice shot here showing you the difference and how it's cooling. Uh, we have this cut down here just so you can see the difference. So it's uh, 20 degrees in just 17 seconds there you can see. 32 degrees in two minutes. So the difference is pretty great on that. Now, if you want to see that full video of mounting that, we also did some driving of the vehicle to show real life differences of it. Uh, we have it on the product page there. You can click through the link in the comments and you can see that full video in there. Where we did a full install and then also driving it around to show the difference in it. Uh, now, again, as I mentioned, it does have these brackets that are made to be fairly universal that you can see here on it. Uh, these brackets come basically uh, as blanks that you can then drill and set up how you want in your vehicle. Um, so these aren't something that bolts into every vehicle, but it's so universal that with the very small modifications, you can make them fit your car. Uh, so when you're looking at your measurements, you want to just make sure it's going to fit uh, under the radiator support uh, that's actually going to clear with the neck and the top of it. And also, of course, the width, make sure that it's going to fit in there in the radiator support and actually fit and uh, not hit. Uh, do we have any questions at all, Scott, so far? Uh, as of right now, somebody just asked if they think in combination, in your opinion, would waterless coolant be a great addition to one of those? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can, anything you can do to help, uh, the waterless coolant is good, or if you're doing an additive to your coolant, that is definitely helpful. And what that does, it kind of keeps the boiling point down and also keeps it from overheating. Uh, so anything you can do to help yourself is definitely key. But um, we have... Uh, some really great comments uh, if we can if we can pull them up off the website here if you guys don't you know as we're talking about this if you don't believe us on the website we have a ton of really good reviews on this of customers that are giving their actual specific engine setup as well as what the differences they were seeing and it's pretty crazy seeing some of these big big engines that guys have in these cars and they're having big trouble where they're running at 220 230 degrees um, 
through the summer and it's on that edge of just overheating all the time. And they're getting it down to, to even greater uh, than we're finding. They're getting it down to 180, uh, not even getting over 190 sitting in traffic with AC on. So it's really incredible. Definitely make sure you check that out on the product page. You can see the reviews and there's a Q&A in there as well to see what other people are asking. Um, we also, if you guys are unclear or unsure about what's going to fit your vehicle, what you can do is actually measure the opening in your radiator um, space in your radiator support and you can go on our website and we have a setup here where it gives you diagrams showing the width and the height uh, of each of our radiators and we offer uh, the traditional Chevy um, radiator setup that's set up for for what you would see on a Chevy and then we also have the outlet swapped uh, for you guys that are running Fords or Chryslers you can also use one of those radiators uh, in, uh, in your vehicle as well. So you can kind of mix and match. And if you're doing something custom, that's full blown custom, uh, there's no real rules. As long as you got your inlet and your outlet where you need it to be, the width is right, the height is right, then you're gonna be good to go. Um, the other thing I wanna show is we do offer, I'm gonna flip this around here. We do offer a full, once you purchase the radiator, you can also get a cooling fan. We have the probes. We have the controllers. So you pretty much get everything set up so that you can mount one of these. And these are reversible. So this particular one uh, is meant to, to mount on the front here. You can mount it on the back side as well, just depending on the space. So when you're measuring to figure out what size radiator you need, uh, make sure that you keep that in mind. You're going to add a little bit of room here for the radiator fan if you're running an electric fan. Um, but you can mount it in the front of the back. So a lot of guys are having uh, some success with mounting them on the, on the front side of the radiator because maybe their water pump uh, pulley is too close to the radiator with the fan on there. Any other questions that we have, Scott? Uh, yes, actually one of them was uh, talking about the horsepower rating to see if it would fit in his. Um, he's a bit past, as uh, we do say comfortably, just to make sure you're not going to have any problems with cooling. We do say around 500 horsepower for these. Yeah. yeah anything above and beyond that, you may run into some problems. We've had some guys push the limits. We had the guy with the uh, blown... Um, uh, Studebaker, who did use it, and I'm sure he's pushing well past that, but yeah. it's like we, we wouldn't be able to guarantee. And one of the other questions I get in tech a lot, we didn't really cover it today, no one actually asked it this time, was about the seams, if any of them are glued. And this particular okay. unit is all welded seams, so you're not getting something that's going to be glued and be, you know, inferior. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point that um, I'm glad you, you, you dropped in on that, because we do get those questions, because you see some of the radiators, you can buy real cheap ones on the auction site and other places that, uh, yes, they're very cheap, but they are using uh, some s sort of adhesive or glue, which, uh, especially when you get something hot, you know, it's gonna expand. Uh, this is fully TIG welded around here, which is nice. Um, and really, we, we rarely ever get a problem with any of these coming back as far as uh, anything for leaking or anything like that. Um, just the biggest thing I would say is make sure you're measuring. That, that's probably the biggest thing we get is people having uh, their measurements not quite right. So go on the website, check it out. You can check out all the different sizes and dimensions to make sure that it'll fit for you. And then with some small uh, drilling of holes or modification with the brackets, you can get them to fit in your vehicle. Any other questions, Scott? I think we're good at this point. Cool. So thanks, guys, for, for catching us on the uh, Trifoil radiator. Again, if you uh, want to know more information, if you caught us late, in the broadcast, you can click on the link and go right to the website and you can check out reviews, you can check out the sizes, and also we have a really nice longer length video of installing this from start to finish in a Firebird where you can see the difference in temperature and real life driving of that to show what it did. So that's all I got for today guys. I appreciate you joining us and uh, I'll catch you later.